Hello everyone and welcome to Sunday School. Today we'll be learning about Moses as a baby and this is a story that shows us of God's love and protection for us. I will be reading in the King Fisher's Children's Bible, Genesis 50, 15 to 26 and Exodus 1st to Exodus 2nd, 1 to 10. Okay, let's begin. Joseph lived to a very old age. When his death drew near, he called to his brothers and said, In time God will lead you out of Egypt into the land that has been promised to us. When that happens, take my body with you. And when his brothers swore that they would do so, Joseph died content. For many years afterwards, the Israelites flourished in Egypt, growing in wealth and number. But then a new pharaoh came to power, and things changed forever. There are now too many Israelites in Egypt, he said. They are becoming stronger than we are, and a threat to the country. We have to control their numbers in case they join forces with our enemies to overcome us. The Egyptians acted swiftly, and the Israelites were enslaved, and their wealth was taken from them, and they were forced to make bricks and grind the mortar for Pharaoh's buildings and temples, and their lives were made hard by the constant persecution. Slave drivers were set over them to crush their spirits with hard labor, but despite this oppression, their numbers still grew, and at last Pharaoh decided to take drastic actions. He gave instructions to two midwives who worked with the Israelites. When you deliver their children, he said, be sure to kill all the baby boys. But the midwives were obedient to God, and they let the boys live. And when Pharaoh heard about this, he summoned the midwives and demanded an explanation. And the midwives made up an excuse. The Israelite women are not like the Egyptians, they said. They give birth so easily and their children are born before we have time to get there. Pharaoh believed this story and the baby boys were spared for a time. As for the midwives, God rewarded them with healthy families of their own. Yet still the Israelites grew stronger until, in desperation, Pharaoh issued one last terrible command. Every newborn Israelite boy is to be thrown into the Nile and drowned at birth. An Israelite couple had two children, Aaron and Miriam, early into the reign of the new Pharaoh. They had a third child, a boy. Now this made them very frightened, for Pharaoh had decreed that all Israelite boys should be put to death. For three months the mother hid her baby, but when she could hide him no longer, she made a little basket out of reeds, sealed it with tar to make it waterproof, and placed the baby inside. Then she went to the Nile River and put the basket among the reeds at the water's edge and told Miriam to keep watch. After a while, Pharaoh's daughter came down to the river with her maids to bathe. Seeing the little basket, she sent a maid to go fetch it. They carefully lifted the lid and saw a tiny baby crying, and immediately their hearts melted. This is one of the Israelite children, said Pharaoh's daughter, and suddenly she heard a voice. It was Miriam. Should I find an Israelite nursemaid to look after him for you? she asked. Yes, said Pharaoh's daughter, who had no children of her own. So Miriam went away and returned with her mother. Take this child away, said Pharaoh's daughter to the mother, and look after him for me. I will pay you to be his nurse. And so the child was brought up in the royal palace as an Egyptian prince, and Pharaoh's daughter named him Moses. It's now time for our activities. So to start with, we have a song called Where is Baby Moses? So let's get right into it, shall we? One, two, one, two, three. Where is baby Moses? Moses, Moses. Where is baby Moses? On the river Nile. He's floating in a basket, a basket, a basket. He's floating in a basket on the river now. The 
the prince says she went swimming, swimming, swimming. The prince says she went swimming on the river now. She found the baby Moses, Moses, Moses. She found the baby Moses on the river now. She took him to the palace, palace, palace. She took him to the palace on the river now. There the baby grew up, grew up, grew up. There the baby grew up on the river now. He saved the Jewish people, the people, the people. He saved the Jewish people on the river now. Now it's time for our crafts and activities. So for our crafts this week, we have some really fun ones. So the first one is a basket made out of yarn. And what you'll want to do is get a bowl. It doesn't really matter which size as long as you can easily put plastic wrap over it. You will take your bowl and you'll put plastic wrap over it. And then you will get yarn and white glue or if you prefer Mod Podge and you will take that and put it in a bowl that you aren't afraid getting dirty and have the yarn soak in it. Once the yarn is pretty well soaked in the glue or Mod Podge mixture you'll then take your plastic wrap covered bowl and you'll start to drape the yarn over it so that it sticks to the plastic wrap and you will leave that to sit out overnight until it's at a place where you've decided you have woven a basket. After an overnight period, it should be hard to the touch. If not, let it dry for another day or so, and you'll be able to peel the plastic wrap away, and you'll have a little bowl made out of strings. The next one is for you aspiring builders out there, and it is to build a boat or a basket that will float using only recyclable materials. That means that you'll have to ask your parents if they have any spare plastic bottles or milk cartons, and then you can decorate it and float it out on the tub or see if it will float. And I would suggest having something that is weightier inside of it, like a small doll that you can put in there or an action figure so that you can see whether or not you've made a boat that can hold a passenger and float. Of course, you can decorate this however you would like. If you are going to decorate something that's going to go in the water, I would suggest permanent markers, but please ask your parents first if you're using permanent markers like Sharpies. For our games, we have a simple scavenger hunt, and this can be done fairly easy. So. The object of the game is to find all of the things that have been hidden and your parents will either have a list for you that they have made if they want to participate or they will tell you what they have hidden and you are going to try your best to find it. The next activity on our list is an obstacle course. You can do this indoors or outdoors. Make sure that you have things set in a way that you have to weave around them or duck under them and give certain instructions maybe for certain objects. So say there's a chair. Now you can either say, no, you have to go over the chair or you have to go between the chair's legs. Make sure that instructions are set out very clearly. For our snacks this week, we have a basket or bowl made out of pretzel sticks and an ice cream bowl. So you can see ice cream bowls at most supermarkets as well as pretzel sticks or pretzel rods. And all you'll need is icing or peanut butter to adhere the pretzel sticks to the side of the bowl. And then, hey, you can even fill it up with ice cream and have a little fun dip for your pretzels. Who here likes Rice Krispie treats? I know I do, and I think I'm probably not alone. What if I told you you can make a bowl or basket out of Rice Krispies? That's right, all you need to do is make sure after you've made the Rice Krispies that you have them flat on a surface and they're still warm so that they'll mold to what you're going to put around it. So you're going to take a bowl covered in wax paper and you're going to put the Rice Krispie treat over top of the bowl and press it down slightly 
and it will set in the shape of a bowl. I will make sure to add a recipe for Rice Krispies, though if you have a box of the cereal, generally they do put the recipe for Rice Krispie squares on the box. Now it's time for us to finish our Sunday School, so let's close our eyes, fold our hands, and bow our heads as we pray. Thank you, God, for protecting me and keeping me safe and sound. Help me now to go tell others of your precious love I've found. Lord, please be with the families in this time and keep and protect them, and may not a hoof be left behind. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much for joining me this week for Sunday School. I should have a printable coloring page for you in the description below. And I hope that you all have a great week. Bye!